what you guys got another video on how to buy a used graphics card now quite a lot of people uh, want to get into pc gaming and of course you're going to need a graphics card now not everyone can afford a brand new graphics card so buying a used graphics card is the next best option but there's always a big risk with buying graphics cards especially when they're used and i'm going to go through some of the things to look out for in this video so first off we're going to take a look at uh, this uh, card here which i bought on ebay you can see the card is in pretty good condition and uh, i can already see that the card has been opened probably for some thermal uh, compound change here which is pretty normal for a card of this age it's an rx 570 it's an aurus card and what you should be looking for is dust build up inside the card here if it's clagged with dust really packed out with dust then you know the card has been really heavily used and probably never been cleaned in its life. Overheating is another issue with cards. You're not going to know whether it overheats unless you see some screenshots of the temperatures or whether you actually test it yourself. Damage to the card or the PCB is another thing to look out for. Symptoms of damage on graphics card include frequent instability and crashing in games, blue screen of death, faulty uh, temperature readings and also artifacts on the screen you also want to look out for fake gpus from china that have been told that it is say for instance an rx 570 and it's actually an older model so always check uh, those uh, serial numbers and also check the information on the card itself as the card been used for mining that's another thing to take into account is it a mining card that doesn't have any sort of display port on it? They're the things you want to look for as well. Has it been repaired or has it been reballed? Never buy these cards from uh, repair shops or anything like that because you'll never know whether the card has been fixed or repaired or reballed. And in that case, it's not worth buying. Now, if you're buying on eBay, make sure you only buy from trusted sellers and they have to have a 95% or above positive feedback. Make sure you check the returns policy and also check the condition of the card to make sure that the card is in really good condition before you buy it. Make sure you research the pricing as well. So many times I've seen people buying used graphics cards when you can buy a brand new one for literally the same price or just a little teeny bit more. It's not worth buying a used card when you can buy the same like for like new around the same sort of price it just doesn't make no sense so checking the new versus the old price difference is important also another thing is to check the price to performance difference if you look here the 1070 is a 289 pounds seller refurbished and yet you can go and buy a 1660 super which will probably perform better than that 1070 ti if not very close but look at the price difference on these cards. They are extortionately high. When you can go and buy a brand new 1660 Super, which literally will be a better card to buy than these old cards. You have got no clue of what these cards have been treated like, whether they've been overclocked or any of the problems that we've already discussed in this video. You can go and buy yourself a brand new 1660 Super for £218.99, brand new, with warranty, and also it will work exactly the same as that GTX 1070. It doesn't make any sense why they're charging so much for those used cards. It's because people are buying them. So what if you are going to buy a used card? What should you do? Well, you should be looking out for screenshots. They should be sharing the GPU-Z information of the card to prove the card is a genuine card. Also show temperatures and also screenshots of it being benchmarked. So you've got something to go back on if there is an issue with that card. They should also be having a returns policy. If they don't, then don't buy the card because it means they are dodgy. We're going to be downloading a couple of pieces of software here and installing that on the system and running the uh, benchmark on this card here. Running Heaven Benchmark is not good enough to prove the card is okay you need to do a firmark gpu stress test on the card this will really tax the card and make sure the fans are working correctly make sure there's no artifacting or any problems with the card whatsoever so we're going to download and install gpu z here and also firmark 
and we're going to run this now be very careful don't walk away and uh, while this is running because the temperatures could go super high and you could run into problems if the card is faulty and it's not functioning properly so you want to make sure that it passes this test here check the gpu z information here to make sure the card is exactly what it says it is and also make sure that it's not a mining card and the bios has been flashed and now you need to go and hunt for another bios it might not be recognized by uh, windows because it doesn't recognize that card because the bios has been flashed so watch out for these little things here now of course there is things that you can do like clean out the card yourself change thermal compound and do a bunch of other things to make the card uh, run a bit better with temperatures and things like that but you really shouldn't have to do that if you are buying a legitimate card uh, that has uh, been sold as working and properly uh, tested so you can see here we're looking at the gpu temperature the fan speed and we're looking also at the memory clock to make sure that we not get any sort of thermal throttling or anything like that i'm going to set this up inside here you really want to set this up to exactly how you want it the gpu uh, temperature alarm is important uh, for your particular card you could do some research to find out what the maximum temperature should be for your particular card and set those alarm settings accordingly to the card maximum temperature of the card that you're trying to test now once we click ok here we can then uh, start to think about running our GPU stress test. Now, I've got this set to 1920 by 1080. And what we're going to do here is basically have a quick look up here for some specs on the card. And you can then check the manufacturer's website about what that card is and what the uh, recommendations for temperatures and things like that are for that card. So you can do a bit of research yourself if you are going to want to know what these specifications are supposed to be for that card it should give you all the information here and everything should tally up with what you're looking at on the gpu z and also with fermark okay so let's uh, start the test here just to make sure the card is functioning properly and we're going to run the stress test here you'll get a bunch of warnings here it will start off on screw full screen here but just make it a bit smaller so you can see it and you'll see a little graph down the bottom here and basically that's giving me what the temperature is on the card and i'm also looking at gpu z here to make sure the fans are spinning up make sure the fans are spinning on the card if they don't work uh, then obviously the card is no good but the cards will not spin until it gets to a certain temperature that's pretty normal and then they will kick in so just make sure you hear the fans ramp up and you, it's giving you plenty of cooling keep an eye on those temperatures and make sure it's not getting too hot if it is getting too toasty then you've got two choices you can either reapply a new thermal compound but personally i don't think you should have to do that if you're buying a used card especially if they're saying it's refurbished or whatever uh, they're telling you it is on their site so let this run and just keep a really close eye now if you're looking at the floating donut as i would call it around the screen there with loads of graphics on it if you're seeing any sort of artifacting which is like little colors on the screen any flickering or anything like that happening on the screen then the card is faulty at that point you may as well stop the test and send the card back and get your money back because the card is faulty and take a screenshot of it and you can send him the information what they're hoping is that you're not clever enough to uh, do an actual test on the card to make sure the card is working correctly now what this piece of software is going to do is run the card at its maximum capacity and what it will do is it really will stress the card and that's what you want to do if you are paying a lot of money for a used card you'll see it started to plateau out now at the top and that means it's reached its maximum temperature and it, the fans will kick in and it should start going up and down at that sort of maximum temperature now games won't ever push the card to pr probably to this level but what you're trying to do is to see whether the card has been repaired or had any sort of issues and this will normally uh, start to show signs of artifacting or issues with the card it will crash blue screen any of that stuff stop the test send the card straight back and get your money back it's that simple uh, gaming on the other hand you may run something like heaven benchmark and it may pass that heaven benchmark that doesn't necessarily mean 
the card is in good working order. And as you can see, this card is perfectly fine. It's not causing any problems. It's getting really loud and, and toasty, but that's because we are really pushing and taxing the card. So you want to do this for a little bit of time. I would say a good 15 minutes. And then once you've reached that thermal capacity there of the card where it's maxed out and plateaued out, you can then normally leave this for a few more minutes and then just stop it. And then basically you should have a good working uh, card. Now you'll notice with the alarm being sounded up the top, you'll see it's reached 83 Celsius. And that's because it went over the 80 Celsius that I put it by three degrees. And uh, that's because uh, these cards do run a little bit hotter, the AMD cards. Now, once you start stopping the test, the temperatures will start to come down. You'll see it's taking a bit of time for the card to get cool. And that's because we've really pushed the card quite a lot. You don't want to be leaving this running for like half an hour or an hour because it's not going to be very good for the card at all. You know, a good few minutes will make sure the card is functioning correctly and working properly. And you can see we had no thermal throttle in there or no issues with the card. It was working perfectly fine. The fan speeds are working and they've spun up to full speed. And we've been pretty much okay with this card. So I know the card is in good working order. So I hope this information has been some use to you. Again, if you run into any sort of problems while running these tests, then basically you want to walk away and send the card back and get a full refund. If you followed all the information in this video to the T, you won't get your fingers burned and you will be able to get your money back or you'll be able to uh, get yourself a better graphics card for, for the money that you want to spend. Because that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. Only pay for what you think the card is worth. There's far too many people charging far too much for used cards, especially on places like eBay. And there's plenty of scammers out there, so be very careful and steer clear of those types of sellers. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a great weekend, guys, and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.